Now, we've just witnessed um, pretty much the worst recession. People are actually comparing it to the Wall Street recession back in the 1930s. But what I've noticed with this particular recession, while some people are pretty much crying, losing their jobs, losing their homes, the certain entrepreneurs are actually making more money and loving the fact that there is a recession now than when there was growth. I mean, how can you explain that? How on the one side, during the worst ever recession, you have certain mindsets of thinking, wow, may this continue forever because I'm making more money today than I've ever made in my particular life. And then there's other people who are losing their jobs. Are we responsible for our own actions? And how do we get the mindset right so that no matter what happens in the economy, we're prepared for it? Well, money, uh, there's never a lack of money. I explain to people that if you have a will, an intention to serve somebody, and you find either your own skill or somebody else's skill that you can deliver a service for somebody that's needed, no matter what the economy is doing, there's always a need. It may be a need to get out of financial problems. It may be a need to get wealthy. It may be a need to keep their home. But whatever the need is, because there's always a need for people, because you're never going to have an ending of needs, the person who's on the ball and looking for how to fill needs is the one who's making money. So um, if you're stuck and rigid in a particular box and that particular market is now not stable, then you're affected because you're determined by the outer world instead of having adaptability. So the person that has the most adaptability and is not too over-specialized is the one that's less likely to extinct during cycles. So I think that the entrepreneurs out there that see opportunities and are running and grabbing opportunities, that's great. Now the change will be if they think that now they can continue to do that when the next change occurs. So they have to constantly keep on the lookout for what the new need is and new values and new uh, services that can be provided and go after them. And I think that uh, that's one of the smartest things an entrepreneur can do is find out what is out there that is really truly needed, where is the niche, and then find a way of providing it. I have a friend who's uh, he's got 37 companies. Wow. Uh, he's 83 years old. He's, uh, he's almost 83. And um, 37 companies. And it was all in business and he just kept looking for niches in business area. Anything to do with business, from resources to hiring to managing to equipment, anything to do with business, that's his niche. So he constantly looks for whatever the new needs are in business and constantly opens and closes and does things to keep that uh, niche active. So he's a real uh, top grade uh, entrepreneur. He's one of the wealthiest people on the planet. Fantastic. And, and he knows what he's doing because he's looking for needs. He's, he's having people research and watching what the market, he's got experts that are looking for where the trends are going and where it go and to fill in those needs. Well, clearly. Um, but then, how do we get around the mindset? You, you see it all the time, you just switch on the TV, where everyone is blaming someone else or some particular action. Oh, it's because of the economy that I'm poor. It's because, I don't know, the, the hurricane has destroyed my house. Uh, how do we get around the mind? How, how do we get people to, to realize and appreciate that we are responsible for everything that happens in our life, not the exterior? Well, I don't want to go as far as saying we're responsible for everything in our life um, when you have a hurricane. Okay. I think it's more we're responsible for our perceptions of the experience and our actions because of the experience and our interpretation of it. We, I, I can't say that you're the cause of the Hurricane Katrina, okay, fair. but I can say that um, whatever happens with the hurricane in Louisiana, for instance, how you decide to take it, interpret it, perceive it, and decide to do and what you decide to do with it is you. That's what you can do. You can become a victim of your history. You can become a master of your destiny by a, the different quest, sets of questions. That's why I say the quality of your life is based on the quality of the questions you ask. You could ask, why this happened to me and what do I do now? Or you could say, this is fantastic. I've now got a whole bunch of people here that don't have homes. I could start a now a company and then build homes. Or I got a now a, a, a waste removal clearing of land business. You know, um, when the, the Maldives had the tsunami, uh, the tire industry skyrocketed. The removal of nails from tires skyrocketed. Uh, land cleansing skyrocketed. Remodeling uh, soil skyrocketed. Um, bicycles skyrocketed. All kind of things skyrocketed. So those are the things that were needed. So wherever there's an a challenge, there's a new opportunity. You never get a challenge without an opportunity. You never get a crisis without a blessing. You never get a pollution without a solution, as I said. <laughs> so what you're saying is that no matter what happens, within this world, you're, what you keep telling us the world is always in perfect equilibrium. The only problem is that the media feeds us only one side of the particular story, so we tend to believe that particular story. 
Well, it depends on our awareness. If we're unaware, we're, we're vulnerable to the multitude's fantasy and delusions of one-sidedness. I call it the mass media loves high contrast uh, sensationalisms, which grab attention, extreme happy or extreme sad kind of thing. But the master media is poised, and it knows there's always two sides, and it's uh, purposeful, and it embraces two sides. And that's why a person who lives in their highest values is more likely that, and the person that doesn't is more likely sensationalist. So I don't go by what the mass media does. In fact, uh, you've been to the Breakthrough Experience, and you know I take people who have been through horrendous things, and I have them ask a different set of questions, and in a matter of minutes to hours, they are sitting there with tears in their eyes saying thank you. And I had a gentleman who was in Sydney, Australia about six months ago. I think it was October, in fact. And um, he just, he got up, I, I ran around the room, there's about 200 people in the room, and I said, anybody here had a major loss? A loss of a loved one, a loss of business, a loss of finance, a loss of a, a child, or anything. And people put their hands up all over the place, because it was right at that, when everything fell. And um, this guy got up and he said, uh, yeah, I've, I, I just lost my business. Friday, they took my house, they took, possessed my car, uh, they, my business was shut down, my income went from normally $375,000 or $360,000 a year, went to zero. Um, I now am debt. I, I didn't pay my taxes. I'm, I'm highly stressed. And I had everybody vote in a room, you know, you tell me. And because a lot of people had financial issues, they voted him to be the one I put on stage. So I said, all right, so you think you lost something. So let's calculate what it's, let's, let's quantify what you lost. And we put it all down, everything you lost. And then we went over there and says, now what did you gain since then? And he just stared at me. Uh, what I gain? Uh, I, I lost everything. I said, no, no, there's never a loss without a gain. There's never a window shut without a window opening or door opening. So what did you gain? And he goes, well, I can't see it. And I said, whenever you're resentful to things, you're blind to the upside. Whenever you're infatuated with things, you're blind to the downside. When you're truthful about things, you see both sides. So let's get truthful and let's find out what you gained. He goes, I have no idea. I said. Did you get closer to your family? He said, yes. I actually was concerned that my wife may not feel secure in the, what's happened, and she may be, because at first she was angry, but actually we have gotten closer. Did you get closer to kids? Yes. How much is that worth? He said, well, it's priceless. I said, no, it isn't. How much is it worth? And he put a dollar figure on it. I said, what else happened? He said, um, well, I actually, I, now that I think about it, I got out of a house that I bought at the peak of the market that was killing me. The payments were killing me. I wasn't able to put in the landscaping I wanted. I was embarrassed by it. I was overwhelmed by the payments. I was having challenges. And I was feeling like it was running me, and I wanted out. I said, so did you get out of that? He goes, yeah, they took it back. Okay? And you don't even know if they're going to force you to pay anything. Well, I don't know yet, but it may be not. I may just be able to get out of it. I said, okay, what's another benefit that came out of it? And by the way, what's that worth? And, and we started quantifying this. And what else is a benefit? He says, well, I got out of a company that when I started, I was inspired by it, but it got to a point where it was just running me. And I was overwhelmed and I was burned out in it. And I wasn't keeping in ca case with what was going on in the market. And I really have a new idea. And right now, since I've had everything, I knew it was about to be taken. Uh, I've been with a buddy and we've joined up four forces and we got a new idea coming. I said, well, so what could you do with that? He says, I could make about four times the amount of money I used to. I said, so did you really lose anything or did you actually have to go through this situation to be able to awaken a bigger business and that was more inspiring to you, that would actually put you in a better position and to be able to buy now at the bottom of the market and make a fortune? He says, I like talking to you. <laughs> and we just kept playing with it and kept asking new questions and seeing it from different light. And in about 45 minutes of asking the right questions, um, his mind just sat there and he had tears in his eyes and he goes, wow, I'm very grateful for what happened. I'm actually thinking I was pretty brilliant. I'm actually glad this has happened. I've got my wife, I've got my children, I'm in a simple place, I'm now going to keep it there, I'm now going to start my business, I'm going to manage my money differently. What a learning experience and I actually do have a company that's going to make a fortune, I really believe it's going to do it. And I'm with a partner that's a lot better off than the one I was with that wasn't working. And I said, so did you lose anything or did you actually transform it? The master lives in a world of transformation, not the illusions of gain and loss. And so I teach wow. people in the breakthrough experience how to transcend their assumptions and fears or resentments or shames or whatever about gains and losses. Fantastic. A perfect example of asking the right question. The key is they asking the right question. Fantastic. I'm good at questions. Oh, yes. I can, I can certainly vouch for that.